let's see here. Um, welcome again, travelers. Welcome. Welcome to Bible Study Devotional Flatland BMX Learning Stream. Um, I know these, stream, these streams seem probably very, very strange, huh? Well, they are strange for me to do as well. They're a little awkward. They're a little, uh, they're probably very, very cringy, but you know what? We're just doing it, right? It kind of gets me to go and do stuff. Um, it gets me to keep, uh, I, I honestly, I ride more when I, when I just, uh, well, just in this aspect of riding in the garage, right? Because generally if you go ride, ride out at the skate park and stuff, you know, you got your homies over there, they're, you know, pumping you up and you're, you know, but it's a little bit harder when you're just kind of like, you know, not in that setting. So I feel like just streaming it kind of like, uh, helps to, uh, kind of get me motivated to just go and, you know, ride. Cause I'll be quite honest is that some of these tricks on flatland they're just like they get they can get kind of frustrating to learn especially when you have tried it for so many times right but it's also that's also like what makes it rewarding because like you do put so much time and stuff and what's been weird is like especially these days lately for these past couple weeks there's been like some days where i have literally not landed anything and then it's weird because like even just like yesterday right Yesterday I landed like two combos that I haven't really landed before, but then the net, the previous day I did not land anything, right? So it's just strange, um, and it's kind of it's it's, a, it's an interesting aspect of of it all. Um, I guess it keeps you uh, humble, just not landing anything. Um, I would like to land everything first try, by the way. You know, it that's the other weird thing is when you watch like like other flatlanders and stuff. I think there's that sense of like they're doing everything at first. No, that's kind of what I thought. I honestly thought Flatline wasn't going to be as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know. I guess some people might find it easy, but um, sometimes when you see other, like, Flatlanders and you see, like, they do this combo, right? And you're like, oh, I'm going to learn it, right? They made, they made it look really easy. And then for some reason you go out and try it. And I'm just like, what in the world, bro? How did you even do that? Like, <laughs> you made it look like it was nothing. So, I don't know. It's odd. Anyway, we're getting into a, a Bible study devotional, okay? Um, there were some topics we were going to maybe look more into. Um, one being, I guess since it's Christmas Eve, right? Uh, which I know there's some, I've been hearing some like controversies and stuff. But you know what? We're going to, just because, you know, we're just going to get a little bit deeper into it, right? We're going to get into uh, something with uh, dreams, right? I know I read something about, like something with dreams, right? Like maybe even we could look up like, dream like symbolism in the Bible, right? Now some people say, you know, uh, I have heard some believers, this is the weird thing, I have heard some believers say, well, dreams don't really mean anything. But then what's weird is I've, you know, after reading the Bible, right, there's actually many mentions of dreams. And I know we did actually a Bible study on this dreams, but, uh, you know, in terms of there was, I remember we were reading on the Bible study we did on dreams, there was actually a part on Joseph, right? And I guess he received some dreams uh, of some certain things of, uh, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ and stuff like that. And um, I think maybe we would have, we, we, we might go into uh, looking deeper into like maybe the, the three magi or the wise men, right? Like what are the magi? Why were, how did they... How did they even come about, right? It's a, it's an interesting uh, aspect. So let's get into it. And we are going to get into that today, okay? So let's see here. So we're going to type in Joseph Dreams. Joseph Dreams. Oh, okay, wait a minute. There's two Josephs. Okay, yeah, yeah. Here, wait up. I need to find it. That's weird. They're only bringing up the Old Testament. Hmm. That's very strange. Because that, that, what's well, odd now I think about it, it's, it's now, now I think about it, what's odd is I'm pretty sure the New Testament one had something about dreams, right? Or, or was it just Joseph in the Old Testament? What in the world? Well, maybe that's kind of... I really thought that there was something about dreams with the Joseph in the New Testament. Um, let's put up... Uh, I just put, jo I wrote Joseph Dreams, and then it's only coming up with, uh, the Old Testament. 
about his brothers and stuff like that. I thought there was something in the new. Let's let's look up um, Joseph um, New Test Testament dreams. What's this gonna bring up? The six dreams. Saint Joseph. Is it Saint Joseph? Yeah, that's... Okay, so this one says the four dreams of Joseph. Joseph dreams on the birth of Jesus. What is this one? Early church history. Interesting. That's kind of actually very strange that Joseph in the Old Testament had dreams, and then Joseph in the New Testament had dreams, right? Isn't that strange? I, I feel like I've never heard anybody really mention that. You know, both of the they both have the same name and they both have dreams, right? It's like that's odd, right? I, I think it's odd. I mean, maybe people don't think it's odd, but... Okay, so what is this? What... What... This is, um... This is on Born of Wonder. I've never seen this site before, but it says, The Dreams of St. Joseph, okay? We're gonna read it, okay? Let's see here. Joseph, son, son of David, do not be afraid. That is Matthew one twenty. And we'll read this commentary. Let's see what it gets into, right? Um, I'm not quite sure. I just remember, I remember there was something about dreams. And now it's just weird thinking that whole aspect of both the Old Testament and New Testament, the name Joseph, they both had dreams, right? It's kind of odd. Um, okay, St. Joseph never saw an angel the way Mary did, clear as day, with her waking eyes. He never saw the burning bush or heard the thunderous voice of God. I am that I am. Saint Joseph only heard God in the quietest, quietest of ways. He dreamed of angels. He heard God while he slept. Now see, there's a lot of weird things about dreams, okay? Now the now I know we did a Bible study maybe a month ago about dreams, right? But I actually had this um this kind of like a uh, this thought that popped in my head, right? Because, you know, like, you know when, you've, when you go out and you see, like, these savants, they call them savants or, like, prodigies, um, especially within, like, music and stuff, they're, like, these little kids, right? And they're just, like, just really, really good at whatever they're doing, right? You're like, what in the world, bro? How did they even, like, get into that aspect, right? You know, how did they even get that good? And I was kind of thinking, right, because you know how they, people say you live one-third of your life sleeping, right? Or, and potentially dreaming, right? And I was thinking, right, so, and then what some people say is sometimes your dreams are the, uh, like your brain, all the things that you've remembered in your brain, and you're just relaying things that have happened and that are stored up in your, in your brain, right? And sometimes I wonder, like, imagine if, like, you never had any other experiences besides what maybe you have been put like maybe not the, the only experiences that you know are things of like say like playing music and then you've never experienced anything else in life right that's all you've ever known right do you think that you could potentially just be doing that in your dreams too right and sometimes i wonder if this is why there are savants and protégés because maybe there is or maybe not even savants or protégés or maybe just just maybe with you know you know how people say that there's talent and stuff like that right well, what if it's not necessarily even talent? Because sometimes it's just you grinding it, right? But imagine you learning and grinding while you're dreaming, right? Imagine you improving of whatever you want to improve while you were sleeping, right? I know that it seems hard to do. I mean, I don't even know if that, that might even be on some other end of like lucid dreaming or something. But I mean, I can only imagine, right, if like... Imagine that, right? You have one third of your life and imagine like you could just be learning whatever you want to get better at in your dreams, right? That would be such a trip, I think. I don't know. So so that's where we're looking more into dreams, okay? And I, I we have these thoughts, the last Bible study on dreams. We, we read, I think, the God questions things on dreams. Maybe we'll read it again, right? Anyway, let's get back to this uh, commentary on St. Saint, Saint Joseph and his dreams. Okay. There are four dreams of St. Joseph in... Of St. Joseph, in the first, he learns the miraculous nature of Mary's pregnancy and is told not to be afraid. 
to take her as his wife. In the second, he is warned to leave Bethlehem, to flee to Egypt. While in Egypt, he has a third dream while he learns that it is safe to return to Israel. Finally, he dreams a fourth dream. He is again warned of danger and travels to Galilee instead of back to Judea. See, that's so strange, right? So are there some instances where you could have maybe a potential prophetic dream about the future, right? And I think this is where it gets a lot, it gets pretty muddied, right? When people bring up dreams, especially when believers say things about dreams and stuff like this, right? Because we've experienced so many dreams, right? And then it's just like strange, right? It's just like this other realm of like, I don't know, it's, it's odd. It's very strange. It's like, do you think that, how do you know if a dream would be from God or if it was just a normal dream, right? Do you think God would relay maybe some signs or some, uh, maybe some significance saying, okay, that, like, imagine you dreamed of something from God and then you woke up and then some things started happening, like God almost like, like showing you that that dream was actually something, a part of what might happen or something like that, right? That'd be very interesting. And I guess, I don't know, I feel like that is something... How would I, how would we word that so we can find some information about, I guess, here, before we get into, I'm going to, I'm going to type in, um, how do you know if a dream is from God or not, right? Maybe that's what we should write. How do you know if a dream is from God or not, right? I think that's a very, that would be a very interesting, uh, thing. And we'll, we'll look at that later because we got to. This is the thing that ends up happening. I, I start reading these commentaries and then these other thoughts that I didn't think what I was going to even think of just start, you know, popping up. Very interesting, actually. Okay, let's see here. Okay, back to Judea. We never hear, hear St. Joseph speak in the Bible, but he is certainly a man of action. With only the certainty, certainty of a dream, he leads a small family across deserts and foreign lands to safety. He acts with conviction though we know he was afraid. Joseph, do not be afraid. We can imagine the scenes we are not told about during the lost years of Jesus' childhood. Hours in the carpentry shop. St. Joseph teaching his son, his young adoptive son, about patience and about how to build the things that last and that are strong. We know, we don't know how St. Joseph died, but tradition tells us it was in the arms of Jesus and Mary. He is the patron saint of a good death, and he is a spe special, quiet intercessor for souls in their last hour. I imagine these last moments on earth will seem a bit like a dream. Perhaps this is why St. Joseph is especially fond of finding souls in that state. Wow. I want to read that again. That was actually very interesting. Imagine those last moments on earth will seem a bit like a dream. Perhaps this is why St. Joseph is especially fond of finding souls in that state. Hmm. And then they got the, there's actually a really gnarly painting. Wow. Really gnarly painting of Joseph sleeping. <laughs> like he's dreaming right there. That's a, that's really, that's a, that's actually a really gnarly painting. Okay, let's see here. Um, what do we learn from St. Joseph, St. Joseph's dreams? We learn that God can speak, perhaps speaks best when we are quiet and passive, when our busy conscious minds are slowed down or turned off completely. By the way, this is not my, this is a commentary, right? Because I feel like what's weird is I have heard some other believers, they say God doesn't do this certain things or they doesn't do them anymore stuff like so take this with a grain of salt right i'm just reading this commentary it's on this is on born of wonder so if you're wondering i've never seen this site before so i really don't know who really wrote this or something so if you want to do your own due diligence this is on born of wonder.com this is uh, i think it's the four dreams of uh saint joseph or something like that right anyway let's get back to it god speaks in ways that can seem absurd in the light of day and that is that that's another aspect right because if we read scripture right there's so many aspects of just these absurd stories right of like these things that people like you know even like thinking about like elijah being fed by ravens or just these other you know and it's uh 
it's very interesting to me, right? If there's a there's an element of mystery and this sense of almost like wonder, right? Like there is another level that maybe maybe God is hidden from the uh I wouldn't say maybe uninitiated, but well, I mean maybe perhaps because there is something in the Life Application Bible, the Life Application Study Bible. Um, it did say something. I remember reading because you know, like the if you if by the way, I, that's that is the first study Bible that I have read was the Life Application Study Bible. First one I actually found it on the ground in Long Beach, which is ridiculous. I literally found a Life Application Study Bible on the street in Long Beach. It was like, it was weird, it was huge. It was like a big old book. It was like strange, it was kind of mysterious actually. And then I started reading it. And then I also read it in Barnes and Noble, which you can also probably do. Um, and the thing is, is that there was, I remember there was this specific part, I think it actually might've been in the part of Elijah or something like that, or it was something about like the prophets, right? And the, it went, the, the commentators like went into something saying like, Sometimes God like puts certain people, especially like prophets and stuff like that, um, especially within scriptures, is that he takes them out and puts them in these very, very unorthodox situations in society, in life, like, you know, even to the point of him, that him isolating people to where they have to go out and live in the wilderness or just these crazy things just so God can God could like speak to them and and so that they could know that God did these things right so sometimes it's weird um and, and you know when I hear a lot of believers they go oh well I'm in the season of like you know this lack a season of lack or these really really uh tribulous like trialsome seasons in their life right and sometimes I wonder if Sometimes we have to go through those seasons in order for God to maybe teach us something, maybe to give us the resilience for something that's going to happen in the future or something, you know, ultimately God might be teaching something even to us when we're even in these very confusing seasons, right? And I think it's something, and there's many, you know, many instances in scripture that that actually happens, right? So take like Moses when he's out in the wilderness for like 40 years and stuff like that. It's a very... Very interesting thing, actually, thinking about it. Anyway, get back to it. That's what that's what made me think of that because the, the this, these commentators said God speaks in ways that can seem absurd in the light of day, right? <laughs> and I'm, and you know it's kind of weird, right? Just thinking about that, how God speaks to us, right? It I actually kind of want I actually forgot that I, this is actually another thing I wanted to get into is I kind of wanted to get into like. You know, like seeds of faith, right? You, you you hear this word. A lot of believers bring this word up, right? Seeds of faith, right? So what I'm wondering is like, how small of a subtle seed of faith can God use to speak to us, right? Because in some degree, I feel like there have been very strange, maybe not, not even strange. There have been like subtle seeds of faith that have been planted in my own life and somehow they got watered later on, right? And, and I feel like even the subtle seed of faith that is like so maybe unorthodox that if other believers were to even like, like listen in on this and they'd be like, oh, that wasn't a subtle seed of faith. Like God couldn't have used that, right? And I feel like a lot of believers would have, would tell me things like that, right? Like even take, for example, I know I bring this up a lot, right? Like I'm talking about like a very, very subtle seed of faith, right? So say even like this, right? This is like, so my Christian friend, which is odd, right? He got me into this game, right? It's, it, I know it says Magic the Gathering. I know it's like, first, that, that's probably like a big thing that people will be like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that stuff, right? But what was weird is this is like one of my first boxes that I got. And it was weird because my Christian friend got me into it, right? And this character right here, his name's Gideon, right? This character's name is Gideon. And what's weird is that I knew this Gideon before I even, even realized that that name was even in the Bible. And what's odd, right, is I pulled this card, I pulled Gideon out of, like, I literally like, pulled him from a pack, and he was done by this, it was actually weird, because he was done by Dave Raposa, and at the time, he, Dave Raposa was on conceptart.org, and I knew that artist, right, I knew Dave Raposa, he was, uh, he did, like, Crimson Daggers, he, he actually did, like, live stream drawing stuff, and I actually learned a lot of my, like, painting, drawing stuff, actually from Dave Raposa, and he's still, uh, painting and stuff, so... I found that like all all weird. I was like, "Whoa!" I pulled a Dave Raposa card. I 
dude, I know that dude from conceptart.org, man. Like, I, he actually live streams way back in the day, and he was, like, painting and stuff like that. So I just thought that was cool, right? And, like, I got deeper into it. And, and what was weird about Gideon in that game, right, it's, like, he's the guy of, like, law or something like that. And, um, and he has, like, a lot of these, like, I guess spells or whatever or abilities and what's weird is then after, like, later on, right, I put I put all that stuff aside. I I started, you know, we got deeper into, then I started reading the Bible. I re started read, reading the study Bible. And then it, 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 like, hit me again. I started reading it. I started reading the Old Testament. I see that name again. I'm like, Gideon. I'm like, what in the world? I, I didn't even know that name was even in the Bible. And it was so strange because, like, I don't know if God, like, if that would... I'm wondering what other believers would think of that. Is that a subtle seed of faith that maybe God kind of, like, maybe wanted me to see before I actually read the Bible? So there would be kind of more of a... Uh, maybe uh, maybe some sort of soil that got tilled, right? Like, I'm wondering if God tills the soil a little bit, right? Even before he plants the seeds of faith, right? Like, does he till the soil in us, right? So take another example, right? So say like I got really into WoW, right? And the other weird thing is I like I got into WoW and and say like there's the priest class, right? And I started playing the priest. There's like the holy priest, the discipline priest, and then there's like the paladin, some of the nature classes, right? And the paladin has like we were talking about it earlier this week, you know, like the paladin has if you read some of the abilities and like spells that they have, they are literally words that are mentioned in scripture. And it's like so strange, like even like consecration, right? We that we read a commentary and they went into consecration. I was like, what in the world? I didn't even know that. I because I didn't even know that word was like something even like really related to scripture. And there's so many other words like that, like benediction. There's like so many interesting words like salvation and all these little subtle words, right? And it's weird because you know how people play video games so much, right? That sometimes when you use these abilities so many times, you kind of numb to the seeing the, the the words that they say, right? But you you know them, right? Especially like power word fortitude, right? It just buffs everybody up. Or like aura of, you know, might or you know, consecration aura and all this all these things, right? And it's like sometimes I wonder if God maybe uses even that subtle subtle aspect. And I'm talking about a very subtle aspect of even the words can somehow be relayed to God's word in just the littlest, even if it doesn't even, you know, do you, I'm wondering, like, I'm wondering what other believers think of this. Do you think that God can use that stuff, right, to somehow speak to us or somehow till the soil before other believers start planting seeds, right? Because that was what was weird. Me growing up is just like, my, I had another Christian friend. He would always be playing like paladins and stuff, right? Now, I made the rogue, right, which was in the beginning, right? And then I actually started getting deeper into the paladin class because of all my, my you know, my friend that played it, and he was really about it. And it was just odd, man, and it was, uh, I honestly think it was a, a very subtle seed of faith, and maybe not even a subtle seed of faith, but um, it's just strange because I don't really hear many pastors bring this up. So that's the other weird thing, right? I don't hear, I haven't really heard many sermons actually where they go into like subtle seeds of faith how subtle can a seed of faith be right how how can you know what does god use to speak to us right can god even use like the mundane or things that maybe other believers might not even consider it a possibility that that could even be a seed of faith could god somehow use your past experiences or something like that to somehow somehow in some weird way to grow something of the faith in you right i have no idea right but you know it's weird because just reading this little bit of this commentary kind of makes me think about that right about just you know the things that we're <laughs> reading right here right anyway let's see here let's continue where was i that was like a whole other top i feel like that's the other thing is I get into these reading these commentaries and then there's like so many other like topics. I'm like, what in the world, brother? That's like a whole nother thing we could like go into, right? <laughs> like there's just, there's, I think we went into another thing. I've already passed by it. I had to write it down. But like there's so many aspects of just like, of like these kind of like hidden, mis maybe not hidden mysteries, but like, you know, just things that we can 
search into more, right? And then there, once we search more into, we find more combos, and then combos, and hopefully we can remember some of these combos. Anyway, okay, let's, where are we at? Where are we at? God speaks in ways that can seem absurd in the day of light, and that's it, in the light of day. That's where all this, that, that literally, that one sentence this commentator wrote, God speaks in ways that can seem absurd in the light of day. That one sentence has, has now barreled into this whole topic that we could go into, right? It's very interesting. Okay, let's see here. Perhaps he needs the strangeness of dreams to teach us something about stories, about the truths that lie just beyond the realm of reason. Man, this, this commentary is really not... I really like how he's writing. It's very like... I don't know, something about it, huh? It makes me just think. It's like, wow, there's like, you know, it's, sometimes I feel like there can be a very legalistic aspect of uh, believers, right? And then sometimes there's like that aspect of, I'm wondering like, does God just want us to like l have fun and just try and live? Because you know, we, you know the thing that the word, the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, he is the way, the truth, and the, the life, right? Sometimes I wonder, like, how God, like, so do you, I'm wondering, sometimes I wonder, I honestly wonder how, what God is thinking about a lot of the crazy stuff that's going on. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> we learn from St. Joseph that we can trust even when we are afraid. We learn that just because someone is silent does not mean they are not. At this very moment, taking courageous actions of great love. Many of us find ourselves in a strange state of limbo these days. St. Peter's Basilica is empty of the usual crowds, and eerie quiet has descended on St. Peter's Square. Okay, let's see, where are we at? Mere weeks ago, it seems months ago now, we were told, you are ashes, and to ashes you will return. You are going to die. Today, with a strange, elusive virus spreading around the globe we are told the same thing you were mortal you were vulnerable we are asked to stay at home wait when did, when did this come out this must be pretty recent huh we are asked to protect the weakest members of our society with with our passiveness with our willingness to stay still let angels into those cracks in your consciousness those absurd great areas of your of the mind that only hum while you sleep let the moment of forced slowness allow you to dream. Let St. Joseph teach us the beauty of quiet and listening, and let his quiet, courageous courage be an example to us all in this odd and frightening moment in history. Do not be afraid. Oh, wow, Rembrandt did that one. Oh, wow, I can't believe Rembrandt actually did a... That's so interesting. Wow. Rembrandt did a painting of that. That's very, very interesting to me. Rembrandt's a... Uh... A very old, I think he was a Dutch painter. I think he was actually from Amsterdam. What was weird about, uh, there's actually a, a documentary I watched on Rembrandt. It was about uh, his life. It was like this uh, audio, actually I think it was The Power of Art. It might have been The Power of Art, but I remember there was this documentary on Rembrandt. And what was weird about Rembrandt, he was really, really poor, right? He was really, really poor growing up. And then something happens and then like, I guess he started making a bunch of money or something, painting and stuff. And he started buying like armor and all this crazy stuff. And he started living in Amsterdam. Pretty interesting. But his use of light was very, very uh, intriguing for a lot of people. And just his painting style. Um, which is also very interesting. Seeing other people's painting styles and stuff like that. Um, okay, so that was that one. I want to see if there's one, like I got questions or something, right? Um, let's look up... Uh, Joseph, Joseph for dreams, for dreams. Let's see if something comes up. I'm surprised like there's not a got questions or something on it. Let's actually look up that one got questions. Let's see, let's look up the, the we're just gonna read it again cause I'm kinda, I wanna kinda get back into it. Um, what, does God speak to us in dreams? Does God, well, you know, speak to us in dreams? Obviously, you spoke to Joseph, right? Because we, we read that, right? Um, there was that got questions one. Where is it? That's so strange. It's like not there anymore. Okay, this one says, how, 
How did God use dreams and visions in the Bible? This is on God Questions, by the way. I think this is the one we may have read, but let's read it again. God used dreams and visions. Visions are waking dreams. See Numbers 24.4. Visions are waking dreams. Interesting. Several times in the Bible to communicate with people. Visions seem to have been common enough that their lack was sorely noted. An absence of visions was due at times to a dearth of prophets. What does that mean? Dearth of prophets. Now, let me look at that word. Dearth definition. I've never seen a scarcity or lack of something. That's weird. So I wonder maybe what if that's going on right now? That's kind of weird. Waking dream. So that is what a vision is, is a waking dream, right? And then it's a this we well, got question says, an absence of visions was due at time to a dearth of prophets, or dearth, a lack of prophets, right? Lack of visions. One one Samuel three one and other times due to the disobedience of God's people. One Samuel twenty eight six. So what does that mean? Disobedience of God's people, right? So I think sometimes when when I read this right now, it almost makes me think of there are some stipulations maybe before God starts revealing things to you, right? Like maybe. Like what this, well, maybe I'm taking this commentary the wrong way, but it's literally just said the disobedience of God's people is a lack of visions. So what if there's some aspect of, what if like, it's so weird to even think about that, right? Like it's, it's weird to think, cause I know some people say, well, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's strange. It's strange what some other believers have said, right? But then I read this commentary and I go, like, even just right now I go, well, that's weird. Why is this guy saying it's, I don't know. Let's just continue. Let's just continue. Okay. Old Testament dreams and visions. God used visions in the Old Testament to reveal his plan, his fur to further his plan and to put his people in places of influence. Abraham, Genesis 15, 1. God used a vision to restate the Abrahamic covenant, reminding Abram that he would have a son and be the father of many nations. Abilamech, Genesis 20, 1 through 7. Abraham's wife, Sarah, was beautiful, so beautiful that when Abraham came into a new area, he occasionally feared that the local ruler would kill him and take Sarah for himself. Abraham told Abilamech, king of Gerur, that Sarah was his sister. She was his half-sister. Abilamech took Sarah into his harem, but God sent him a dream telling him not to touch Sarah because she was Abraham's wife. The king returned to Sarah to her husband the next morning. The dream had protected Sarah and safeguarded God's plan for Sarah to be the mother of his chosen people. Wow, that's really not what I think about, right? A dream protected Sarah. Jacob, Genesis 28, 10 through 17. Jacob, with his mother's help, stole Esau's firstborn inheritance. Jacob then fled Esau's anger, and on his journey, he had his famous dream of a ladder reaching to heaven, on which angels ascended and descended. In this dream, Jacob received God's promise that Abraham's blessing would be carried on through him. Man, imagine having, I've never had a dream like that. Imagine you sleeping, you dreaming, and you were dreaming of this ladder that reaches all the way to heaven. There's like angels descending and ascending. Man, I've never had a dream like that. That, is, that would be a trip, huh? Joseph, Genesis, Joseph. Okay, this is the Old Testament Joseph, right? And it's so weird. This is the weird thing because in the Old Testament, Joseph had dreams, and in the New Testament, Joseph had dreams. That's just strange, right? It's just weird. And, the, and it's like the other commentator didn't even go into that, right? They didn't even go into like that both Joseph's had dreams. Okay, so let's see here. Jo Genesis 37, 1 through 11. Joseph is one of the most famous dreamers and one of the most famous dream interpreters. In the Bible, his first recorded dreams are found in Genesis 37. They showed through easily deciphered symbols that Joseph's family would one day bow to him in respect. 
His brothers didn't appreciate the dream and in their hatred sold Joseph into slavery. Eventually, Joseph ended up in prison in Egypt. Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker, Genesis 40. While in prison, Joseph interpreted some dreams of Joseph's cupbearer and baker. With God's guidance, he explained that the cupbearer would return to, jo to Pharaoh's service, but the baker would be killed. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Genesis 41. Two years later, Pharaoh himself had a dream, which, jo which Joseph interpreted. God's purpose was to raise Joseph to second in command over Egypt and to save the Egyptians and the Israelites from a horrible famine. Samuel 1.3 Samuel had his first vision as a young boy. God told him that, that judgment was coming upon the sons of Samuel's mentors, Eli. The young Samuel was faithful to relay the information, and God continued to speak through Samuel the rest of his life. Dude, there is so many instances of dreams. It's so weird that more, like, it's odd that I don't hear this mentioned more, right? That's the weird thing. I don't, I'm going to be really honest. I mean, I'm thinking about, like, you know, the sermons from the churches. I used to even work, help out and stuff. And it's like, man, I don't, I don't really hear too many pastors bring up dreams. And I maybe the reason why pastors don't bring up dreams too much is maybe because it can be very muddied, right? Because then people go, well, was this dream from God? Or is that one from God? Or what What about this? Is this from God? And I think maybe pastors maybe don't want to deal with that, right? <laughs> I maybe wouldn't want to deal with that. If a bunch of people came up to me and was just like, hey, man, I had this dream. Like, is this from... I, I'd be like, I don't really... You're, you're, I, well, honestly, what I'd probably say to them, I'd be like, hey, man, like... I think if that dream was from God, God is going to somehow relay this in in reality and he's gonna maybe like he's gonna maybe like give you signs to say that dream was from him right i'm thinking that's what would happen right but i don't know i guess maybe this is a reason why maybe a lot of pastors don't bring this stuff up right <laughs> anyway let's see here the midnight and amalekite armies judges 7 12 through 15. the pagan enemies of israel had a divinely inspired dream god told gideon to sneak into the enemy camp at night. And there in the outpost of the camp, Gideon overheard an enemy soldier relate a dream he just had. The interpretation from another enemy soldier mentioned Gideon by name and predicted that Israel would win the battle. Gideon was greatly encouraged by this revelation. It's kind of funny that they brought up Gideon because I literally was just talking about Gideon. Okay, Solomon, 1 Kings 3.5. It was in a dream that God gave Solomon the famous offer. Ask what you wish me to give you. Solomon chose wisdom. Dude, that is so bizarre right there. Wait a minute. 1 Kings 3, 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give you. What in the world? Wait a minute. I've never heard a pastor bring this up. So can God come to you in a dream? Or am I just reading 1 Kings 3, 5 differently? Let's see here. Solomon, 1 Kings 3, 5. It was in a dream that God gave Solomon the famous offer. Ask what you wish me to give you. Solomon chose wisdom. Huh. That's weird. So, huh. Man, that's really weird to think about. That God came to Solomon in a dream. That is so weird, huh? Man, that is so weird to think about. I've never really heard anybody really bring that up. Huh. That's really weird. That's like, so strange. you think that more people would bring that up. Uh, I don't know. Let's continue. Let's see here. Daniel, Daniel 2, 4. As he had done for Joseph, God placed Daniel in a position of power and influence by allowing him to interpret a foreign ruler's dream. This is consistent with God's propensity to use miracles to identify his messengers. Daniel himself had many dreams and visions, mostly related to future kingdoms of the world and the nation of Israel. Okay, now we're, now we're into the New Testament. New Testament dreams and visions. Visions in the New Testament also served to provide information that was unavailable elsewhere. 
Specifically, God used visions and dreams to identify Jesus and establish his church. Zacharias, Luke 1, 5 through 23. God used a vision to tell Zacharias, an old priest, that he would soon have an important son. Not long after, Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth, had John the Baptist. And now it's Christmas Eve, and we're getting back into Joseph. I wonder if there's a, there has to be some sermons on Joseph's dreams, the name Joseph, Old Testament and New Testament. Is there some sort of mystery about it, right? Okay, Matthew 1.20 and 2.13. Joseph would have divorced Mary when he found out she was pregnant, but God sent an angel to him in a dream, convincing him that the pregnancy was of God. Joseph went ahead with the marriage after Jesus was born, God, God sent two more dreams, one to tell Joseph to take his family to Egypt so Herod could not kill Jesus, and another to tell Herod was dead and that he could return home. Wow. So that's a whole nother thing. So we're taught, dude, there's so many, okay, so all the dreams we just covered, it seems there's like dreams where God can literally come to you in a dream angels can come to you in a dream there are prophetic dreams where you can go and, and god might reveal something in the future to you in a dream dude there is so much like it's it's actually very bizarre that i don't hear more pastors even talking about this right i mean i guess yeah i don't know it's just weird it's just strange i mean i guess i haven't really looked it up you know i, I i'm I, i'm pretty sure if I, we looked up dreams sermon youtube i bet there's probably like a hundred sermons or something on that stuff but just you know you know you know when you go to church and stuff and you hear your pastors and stuff you know there's certain things that i don't really hear too much of um okay pilate's wife matthew 27 19 during jesus's trial pilate sent an urgent message to the governor encouraging him to free jesus her message was promptly was promoted by a dream she had a nightmare Really, that convinced her that Jesus was innocent and that Pilate should have nothing to do with his case. Aeneas, Acts 9.10. It would have taken nothing less than a vision from God to convince Aeneas, a Christian in Damascus, to visit Paul, the persecutor of Christians. But because Aeneas was obedient to God's leading, Paul regained his sight and found the truth about those he was trying to kill. Dude, there are so many. How many? How long does this go, bro? This is redundant. Dude, this is gnarly, dude. I'm not even halfway done with this commentary <laughs> on dreams. This is like heavy, dude. This is like, like for how many how many scriptures this is mentioning about dreams and visions? Holy moly, bro. This is like, I, this is gnarly. Hmm. Okay, let's see. I, I mean, I guess I could just skip a bunch of these, to be honest, but it was, we were just trying to get in the one about Christmas Eve, right? So, I mean, but I guess if you guys want to, I guess we'll finish it off when I'm this far in, right? Okay, Cornelius. God spoke to an Italian centurion named Cornelius, who feared the God of the Jews. In his vision, Cornelius saw an angel who told him where to find Simon Peter and to send for him and listen to his message. Cornelius obeyed the vision. Peter came and preached, and Cornelius and his household was full of Gentiles were saved by the grace of God. Peter, Acts 10, 9-15 While Peter was praying on the rooftop of the house of Joppa, God gave him a vision of animals lowered in something like a sheep. A voice from heaven told Peter to kill the animals, some of which were unclean, and eat them. The vision served to show that Christians are not bound by kosher law and that God had pronounced Gentiles clean. That is, heaven is open to all who follow Jesus. Paul. Paul had visions in his missionary career. One sent him to preach in Macedonia, Acts 16, 9 through 10. Another encouraged him to keep preaching in Corinth, Acts 18, 9 through 11. God also gave him a vision of heaven in 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 6. John, Revelation. Nearly the entire book of Revelation is a vision John had while exiled on the island of Patmos. 
John's vision explains in more detail some of the events that God had shown Daniel. Today's Dreams and Visions With the completion of the Bible, God does not have to use dreams and visions as much as he did before. That is not to say that he cannot or does not. God can communicate with us however he chooses. But when we have a decision to make, our first stop should always be the Bible, not a dream. Very interesting, right? That was a lot of mentionings about dreams in the scriptures. Oh, somebody came in here. Sorry, bro. I didn't even. I didn't even. Uh, I didn't uh, see your uh, your comment. Okay, let's see here. Uh, dreams and visions, huh? I kind of want to read this one. This one's a Christian dream interpretation. Okay, well, this one says GotQuestions.org is not a Christian dream interpretation service. We do not interpret dreams. We strongly believe that a person's dreams and the meaning of those dreams are between the person and God alone. In the past, God spoke to people sometimes in dreams. I mean, I guess that wouldn't really make sense, though, right? Because the Got Questions literally brought up the story of Gideon, right? Because didn't Gideon go into the camp and he heard somebody else's dream interpretation and then God relayed the message to Gideon? What in the world, man? That is gnarly, huh? That's just gnarly to think about. Wow. But honestly, it says we are to prayerfully examine the Word of God and make sure your dream is in agreement with Scripture. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I think that's another big one, right? I think that's I think that's where a lot of confusion can happen, but I honestly think if God was to give you a dream or something that he would affirm it, right? Somehow in reality. Yeah, Joseph, so what did we learn today? Joseph's four dreams. Four dreams, huh? Intriguing. Very intriguing. Anyway, I guess that was a Bible study today. Something to think about. A lot more to take in and and ponder over, right? So, let's do a card draw. Let's see what happens. Shuffle these things up. Do 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 going to cut it too because I want to see I want to get a really really shuffled up one today because I think I haven't been shuffling it enough actually okay now we're going to take this spot put this one on top this one on top Good. Bring this over. Should I put this one on my Insta? Eh. Let's play it out right now. What is the hand for today? What will be? What is the hand for today? Let's cut it again, just, you know, just to... Okay, 
these cards at the very top are the ones we're drawing. Right here. Okay, what are we going to draw today? What is this first card? Boop! Stoneforge Mystic. Intriguing. Second card. Planes. Okay. I like this planes. Planes. Third. That should lead, huh? Bant Sherblade. Probably looks gnarly, actually. From the artist of Michael Cormack. Number four. Huh. Twilight Drover. This card looks gnarly, huh? Bro, this card looks crazy. Bro, I can't even believe I even, I even freaking pulled this card right now. Look, it almost kind of reminds me of the thing that we just literally went into about the dreams, right? I know that dude looks kind of like a dead dude, but... Bro, that thing looks so crazy, man. Like, imagine even you just even having a little glimpse of what the spirit realm looks like, huh? Every time I see this card, it's like... I just think about the spirit realm. Well, it's called the spirit, right? But, bro. Look at that guy on the side right there. He's like... Looks like he's dead, but... Maybe you're just asleep, huh? Okay. Noble Panther. This card again. We drew this one earlier. Oh, you know what? There's actually something... Uh... Well, I know this card always reminds me of the AI that's going on right now. A bunch of the artists are talking about it every single day I go on. This Now it's kind of reminded me of like... Do you think computers will eventually start dreaming or... What if AI has some sort of effect on people's dreams? Right? Man. That's really hard to think about. Huh. I mean, I guess technology already does have... You know what? I think technology does have a firm grasp on people's dreams, right? Because of it, it influences our mind. Huh. It's really strange to think about now. Ooh, it's a personal sanctuary. Cool. Personal sanctuary. Sounds sounds ridiculous, actually, but this card actually somewhat inspired me to even do this, like, Bible study thing. You know, she has her little book. There is a... This is a Paladin of the Northern Verge. Personal sanctuary. Seven. Ooh, congregate. Congregate. What did we learn today? We learned today, I mean, I, if there's one thing, another thing that we've taken today is that angels can actually, we can learn things from angels and dreams, right? I'm not going to say that happens all the time, but, you know, if you... I guess a little deeper in it. Is this the last card? Okay, yeah, this is the last card. Oh, I need to get some new sleeves. Is this thing cut open? What the? Oh, well, it's not like I'm going to really sell these cards or anything. This is the last card of the day. Aegis Angel. Card looks gnarly, huh? I like the art on that one. Was the hand for today? Hmm. Intriguing. Okay, I'm taking a little break. I'm gonna chug this coffee. We'll be back in a little bit. Might be a little short of a stream. I'm a little tired today, but we're still gonna try and get it done. Okay. I'm gonna at least attempt to ride for a little bit. Even if it's for like ten minutes or something.
I'm tired today. I'm tired today, but you know what? We're going to try and ride. Let's try and level up a little bit, right? We will try and level up a little bit. Generally, if I'm tired, as long as I just ride for a little bit, I can start kind of getting it going. I just have to just get it going. We just got to start it up a little bit. Just got to rev it up a little bit, man. I don't want to see if I can land a quad hook today. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Oops. Sorry. Oopsies. Let's put some music on. Music on, music on, music, 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 music. See so we get quad whip. I'm gonna land one though. Actually no, I did land one last week, but it was really sketchy. It's a sketchy quad whip, huh? I just can't believe I almost did it right there. Ah, oh, normally I have to grind for it, man. I didn't like. Oh, man, let's see. Let's see what it is. That was so close. Okay, maybe I might be a lens. I mean, eventually I want to do seven, right? I'm trying to do seven. Seven tail whips, seven fire hydrants. That's the end goal. out there and you know how to do this trick we need more how to's because there's like so many different ways to do this trick like it seems like most people they do it this way every person I see on the internet kind of they always do it this way like this but I think it's harder they do it like this and then they and then they start it off but what's weird is I think that's harder than doing it the way that I'm doing it Oh, come on. 
Let's see if we can do a, a seven no-hander. Oh, I'm like tired today. Slow. One. That was close. That one's been kind of taking me. I always get kind of like I can't only I can't do that one a lot. I just get tired. Oops. Somebody said something. Let's see. What do you say? Is this an ad? What is this? Hello, my name is Saina, and to spread some positivity and to put some joy in people's weeks, I like to go around telling streaming to have an amazing week. Hope. It's going well so far. You're beautiful and you have a Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, it's always good. It's good to encourage people, right? Sounds kind of cheesy, but someone told me like, you know, even if you don't like somebody, you should try and just try and motivate them and encourage them because you never know what they're going through, right? I guess you never really know what's behind the scenes on everybody's life. You know, you never know what gnarly things might be going down. So, I guess it's good to try and motivate and encourage people. That's good. I like that. I like that message. That was really good. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Oh, that was close. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate the nice words. Is there any people who need to stop in here? Normally I don't really have people even watching the stream, except for the VODs for some reason. So, let's see if we can do a uh, funky chicken do. Uh, decade.
It's weird, it's cold, but once you start riding, it's just like you just warm up. It should be cold right now, so. It's weird. Okay, what are we gonna try? What combo was we going for? I don't even know. I mean, we're trying for a quad. What combo? Oh, yeah! Here, we got a combo. We're gonna try pickup bar, because we didn't land it yesterday. Pickup bar, switch, wait, it's pickup regular bar, switch X up, land, to like Ryan and I quest spin. I probably should be filming, I actually, I should probably be filming on my phone. I'm going to check that. Oh, should we do the upside down tail whip? Maybe that's what we should go for. Upside down tail whip. Maybe we go for that one. See what we can do, quad. Actually, I haven't landed this one in a while. Um, 360 tail tap chainsaw, foot jam tail whip, fake generator, half bar, half bar, briefcase bar, drop down decade. We haven't landed this one. That combo I haven't landed yet, so. I'm landing a variation of it, but not this one in particular.
Skip ads. Tie my shoe. Hard to get that right angle on the foot jam tail whip. Should have not went for the decade. Oh well. See, I know that there's some where it's just like I just get so close that I'm like, I don't even want to try it again. Cause like, I'm just gonna get frustrated. So, let's move on. Let's do this Hank Five thing. Oops. Do this Hank Five thing. That's fun. All right, so let's do Hank Five to Sweeper backwards to five ten no meter. Right angle on it. I like that doesn't work. Oh, come on. Like, if you get like a little bit too like this or a little bit too like that, you gotta get like that right angle too. It's crazy because people can hold this trick for a really long time. I can only do it for like a foot. All right, we're moving on. Let's do a turbine steamroller. Yesterday we were trying that trigger. It worked out pretty good. Bro, there's so many ads. Bro, this dude's. You got a lot of ads going on, man. You can add every 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes. All right. So I'm really bad at this trick too. Turbine steamroller. This is literally the ride it and I can't even do it hardly. There's a lot of combos from this one. I can't even do the ride it that good. right there. <laughs> There's like a bar spin steamroller too. Eventually that's what I'm going to go into. A bar spin steamroller from this one. It's like, what's weird about this one is like, it doesn't seem that hard, right? 
But there's so many little finicky things about it. It's weird because like sometimes I go backwards and then like sometimes I go forwards, right? And I don't know like the levels. So like sometimes you go forward like this. This is what I'm trying to do, right? Because if you got good at this one. But then sometimes I go backwards. And right? sometimes you go like this. You know, what in the world? Like, I'm not even trying to go backwards. forwards I go backwards. Now that how teams really went go into that. I wonder if that's just a different trick. Is that just a fakey turbine steamroller? I don't even know. I like stalled it. Do you see that? That was weird. I literally like held it in place for like a second. What in the world? And see, that's what's weird is every single one I've done is different, right? Like it's just such a weird trick. The weird, the strange thing about it is I'm doing the exact same thing. Well, it feels like I'm doing the exact same thing. But then some of, some of them just feel totally different. Bro, there's another ad. Here, wait, we need to put like a longer playlist on. Crystal surf, dude. Let's hit the surf, dude. Ah! Why can't I land it? Fudge. I'm like starting to pump it too. I can like feel the speed I can gain. Ah. Stuck. We're stuck on it. Okay, let's do a funky chicken. You guys are out there, please make a funky chicken half too. Okay, one line this trick. What are we going to do? I'm going to learn some new tricks, man. I guess all the tricks that I'm like doing, I guess I could just get better at them, but... I'm like wondering what other new tricks... I just want to do like multiples now, or just combo it into it. Do another quad a try.
Oh yeah, I'm gonna try the Barstman Club. Do the Barstman one. I forgot that was, that was the combo I was trying to, before I get bored. Alright, okay. Oh. <laughs> I almost did it right there. I know it's not even that hard, but... I'm bad at bar spins so. though. Even just doing that's a testament to me. I see people do crazy combos from this one. I'm trying to get in the scuff though. You gotta like catch it and then just go into it. Ah, so that it. Like people do it like in the air, it's crazy. <laughs> they jump like five feet out in the air and do it. And land in X up. I can't even do it on flat. and a half. <laughs> oh my goodness. Imagine landing that, dude. Half bar. That'd be scary. Oh, let's go back to the quad. Ah. Do a little double Reno. a secret about this trick. Maybe the secret is having zero offset forks. Do any of you guys do this trick out there? Does anybody do this trick? Do I need zero offset forks? <laughs> Why is this trick so hard? It seems like everybody that's good at this trick, it seems like they have zero offset forks. so hard it just it's fun okay what are we gonna do what new combo are we gonna do uh, hmm we could try like the faking wall thing we kind of did that one let's just do some like hank five hank five squeaker Maybe get a better squeaker one to that side over there. Oops. Really the first time that that hasn't happened in a long time. It looped out. Oh, 
almost looped out right there. Again. <laughs> that was fun. The hang fry is a fun trick, man. It sounds ridiculous, but like... I never thought I would have ever learned it. Now I get more than commandos. Oh! I almost lost it right there. Look at that. That's what we're going for. Yeah, how long have you been on BMX? Since I was four years old. I used to race. Got into racing, all that. Uh, about two years ago, I tore my ACL. I don't, I never got surgery. I'm wearing this gnarly brace right now. So, I think eventually I'm probably gonna have to get surgery. I have probably one more good fall. Like good, good fall I'm talking about where I can't walk anymore, but kind of pushed me into riding flatland. Um, streaming kind of pushed me into riding flatland because I don't have the internet to stream. Actually, when I first started streaming, right? I actually tried to stream at the skate park, right? I was like, I'm gonna stream at the skate park, yeah. Well, I don't have the right internet. <laughs> So, so, this is why I stream in the garage so much because I don't have the right internet to stream outside of my Wi-Fi, right? I can ride like out front, but um, the ground is like not flat. Like this is probably, this, this ground is probably the most level ground in a couple miles from here in terms of where I can ride, right? And it's just consistent, you know? And it's weird, I never thought that I'd be riding in this little space as long as I have been. Like, but there's so many things to learn. Like flatland, it has like, there's like a mysterious element of flatland because there's a lot of tricks and they do not have how-tos. Or there's only like a couple how-tos and you have to kind of just like figure it out yourself. And it's kind of fun. It's like, I don't know, it's weird. Glory be to God. Yeah, balance. Yeah, it's kind of all about balance. It's honestly just about patience to be honest. I think if there's anything that's like Flatland has taught me, it's just patience. Patience and tenacity, right? Just trying to stick with it, right? But it's really fun. It feels like an RPG game. It sounds ridiculous. It feels like, you know, like an RPG game, like where you have to like level up and you know how you have like the talent trees, like you have the talent trees, you put one point right there and it opens and locks this other thing. This is what Flatland feels like. It feels like you're, you're, you're like, you're like, Gaining these abilities, just you know, leveling up and stuff. It's really cool. Yep. And the other weird thing, so this trick right here, I'll show you. This trick right here is the one that got me into flatland. So what's weird about this trick I'm about to do, right? There's two other believers that ride flatland, like believers in Christ, and they would both do this trick, right? If you're out there, you probably know who, who they are. They're pretty big. Well, one of them's pretty big. But um, the thing is, is that they would both do this trick, right? It's called the stick be no hander. And it was just so strange because both of them like, like kind of proclaimed the gospel and stuff. And I just thought it was weird. I was like, what in the world? And they don't even live by each other. It's just strange that they both did that trick and they don't even like know each other. Well, maybe they did know each other. I really don't know, but it's this trick right here. See that one? Then there's like combos you can do into it. <laughs> it's fun. That one's really. That one's probably the trick that's taken me the longest to learn so far. So. That one's fun. I do that one a lot. It's just really hard to land. But yeah, that trick right there is weird, you know. Two believers would do that trick. And so I wanted to learn it. And it's been maybe two years when I finally got down kind of a little bit.
Let's actually see if I can do it from a track stand or hander. Tricks, no handed tricks, no handed tricks. I don't think I've even landed anything today. Really. I done? Oh yeah, there was a combo I was trying. We were trying to do um, double fire hydrant, double fire hydrant track stand, no hander, swivel to uh, stick bead. Maybe we could try that one. I haven't landed this one yet. My fire hydrants are a little off today. Except I almost landed a quad earlier. Oh, come on. Let's see here. I don't know how much about BMXing, but I biked across Europe last summer. I'm about the track and tricks. Oh, for sure. That's awesome, dude. That's really cool. You know, I think that's the cool thing about the bike, right? I think the bikes are very interesting. I've met so many people um, just riding bikes, you know, just you, whether they ride road bikes, mountain bikes. I mean, it'd be really cool uh, to do the, uh, do, were you doing the bike packing? You know, like the bike packing where they have the packs and they go and camp and stuff. I've been seeing that. That's been popping off lately. I've been noticing that. Sometimes I'll watch, uh, what's his name? I think his name's Ryan Van Duzer. Um, I think he bikes across America um, really gnarly and there's been some people it's I actually watched this documentary of this guy that rode his like he rode around the world there's like a there's a legitimate like I don't know if it's like an endurance race or something but there's this thing where uh, they have it mapped out right so wherever you're at if you want to ride around the world there's like this thing where you can follow and you'll follow this track and it's not legitimately like you start from here and you go all the way around, right? You have to like go and like, you know, go over here and then you, I think you might have to like take like a plane ride and then go somewhere else and then ride around. It's really cool though. That stuff would be intense, dude. Oh my goodness, bro. Like the bike packing stuff, man. There's actually another bike packer. It's kind of, it's actually, now that you bring, the, uh, now they bring that up, there's actually another believer. It's kind of a, a very mysterious believer. I forgot his YouTube name, but um, he was doing the bike packing. I think he rode from uh, like Virginia all the way to Canada. Like he literally went from from Virginia. He rode all the way to like Texas, through New Mexico, through Arizona, all the way up California, and then went up to like Canada. And he was like, I forgot his name. Like he, it's somebody on YouTube, and he was a believer. It's really cool. America seems like a crazy huge place to travel. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Though it seems dangerous sometimes. I've been, I have noticed uh, uh, some of those bike packers, especially when they have the trailer, you know? Because there was this one dude, actually, I know this one dude had a trailer on his bike packing setup, which I think if I got into bike packing, I wouldn't have the trailer. It's just too bulky. But he got like hit by a car and like he got put in the hospital and stuff. So that's really gnarly. So, yeah, if, I think if you get into bike packing, I think maybe uh, stick with the packs and maybe the little trailer. This dude had like a giant trailer. Yeah, he, he had like a trailer like, like this big, like, like as big as like a, uh, where you could sleep in it, right? I was like, dude, that's gnarly, man. You're and he's riding on the side of the road, right? And he got hit by a car, so, uh, take that as what you will. 
But the thing about Flatland is Flatland's like really safe, you know. It's a lot more safe. But I like all types of riding. If I didn't have money, I'd, have, I'd probably get into mountain biking. But mountain biking's expensive, dude. That thing is like a whole nother level. I do have that bike right there, I should probably fix it up. But I think what's cool about Flatland is you can just kind of like get into it and you just keep leveling up, right? Like a lot of these tricks, um, I learned uh, just like walking into them, right? Like this one, you know, you can just do it like this. Yep, 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 yep. I think somebody's actually ridden around the world on a, on a BMX bike. I did read, uh, there. there's like one article, which I don't know, it's weird because I don't hear it very much, but there is this one dude and he, I guess he rode like around the world or something on a BMX bike. Really gnarly. I think what I also like about the BMX bike is it's very portable, right? Cause you can like put it in like a car, like you, know, you can like put it in your car. You know, boop. Like other bikes kind of take off the front wheel. I also think it's just a good way for a ministry aspect as well. You're that guy from uh, Reddit, right? I'm pretty sure I remember your name. Because um, that's another aspect. Is you get to see so many parts of humanity on the bike, right? You get to see like the poorest of the poor. You get to see like the richest, maybe not the richest of the rich, but you know, you get to see like that wide range of level. Whereas like, you know, in most cases, if you're driving around, you probably want to stay away from the bad areas, right? You don't want to see like the poor, so you're going to drive away from that stuff. In most cases, sometimes it's just right in front of your face and you can't do that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. You can explore the lands a bit, way more differently on a bike. It's already been two hours. I haven't even landed a single thing today. Hmm. Let's see here. I'm trying to see like what what can we do? Hmm. I kinda wanna do like the hang five line. Hang five, squeaker, hang five, fakey hang ten no hander. I need you guys know how to do this trick. Please make a hat too because I've been stuck on it. I don't know how to do this again. Yeah. So you gotta get that right angle. I'm trying to go. Ah! It's like people can hold it. There's this one rider, he'll literally hold that for like 20 feet. I'm just like, what in the world, bro? I can't even do it for a foot. How do you hold that thing for 20 feet? It doesn't make any sense. And it's not a cliffhanger. It's just like a hang 10 no hander. And it's not, you know, it's weird. It's like, I, bet, I guess I'm just not good at doing the baby. See, it's almost like that. That was almost one. Let's see here. Um, I went on this trip. It's been some kind of a spiritual pilgrimage for me. It's exposed me to the life part of Christ. I am the truth, the way, and the life. Wants to get out of my own garage, you know? Oh, for sure, man. You know what's weird? Is I kind of went on this strange, like, I went on a, a, I went on kind of like a strange, like, spiritual pilgrimage as well. So, um, I actually ended up living out in my car in Long Beach for three and a half years. It was really, really crazy. And um, that's when I, my faith really started like growing and blossoming, right? 
Because prior to that trip, I like read the Bible, you know, kind of. And I kind of like grew up in the church and stuff like that, right? But I never really believed it, right? I was kind of like, eh, all right, you know. But I never really, really, really believed it, right? And then I went on that trip and I lived in my car for three and a half years in Long Beach. And bro, it changed me, dude. Like I saw so much, it was just like mysterious, dude. There was, I met so many mysterious believers. And yeah, it was, uh, I met so many like zealous believers too. I met believers that didn't have anything. Like that's, that changes somebody. When you encounter believers that all they have is the clothes on their back and they're like fully trusting God, man, that's like a, and it's weird because at the time I was actually mad at God, right? I was kind of like pissed off at God. I was like, God, why do you have me through this? It doesn't make any sense. And then like I'd meet these homeless people, right? And I'm like, bro, dude, I could be at that level. Like, why am I even complaining, right? Are you in the U.S.? Is that why the internet sucks there? I don't know, actually. Well, I am in the U.S., yeah, but uh, I don't know about the internet. I think just, uh, I think streaming takes up a good amount of the internet. But I think you need some sort of like, um, I don't know what kind of internet you need for the uh, IRL streaming outside of Wi-Fi, right? Somebody said, somebody actually hopped on the stream and they said like how those IRL streamers do it. Some of the, so how some of these IRL streamers do it, I guess they have like a backpack or something, right? Like they have a backpack and then they have like this modem or something. It's like $700 and it's like a modem and then you like connect it to your phone and it's like a modem or something. It has like a, I don't know what it really is. And it allows you to have really good internet anywhere. It might even be like satellite internet or something. And that's what some of those IRL streamers do. But right now I'm kind of stuck on the Wi-Fi. So that's another reason why we're streaming in here. And this phone is dead. I have to charge this thing up. Where's my charger at? But yeah, my setup's like really, like, I don't have that crazy of a setup. I'm using a really old phone. It's not like a, like a, you know, it's not like a DSLR like a lot of these streamers are using. This is literally streamed on an old Galaxy Note 5, which is like a 20-year-old phone or something. <laughs> I can't even believe I haven't blown up already. It's somehow still working. That's the craziest thing. Okay. Let me plug this in here. But yeah, I think it's what's been weird is like streaming's been really like... I think it's helped me to be more productive, right? What I end up no noticing, I've heard this from other streamers too, is when I'm not like streaming really, right? It's like, I'll just sit there on my phone and I'm just like scrolling, right? Just like in, just stuck, right? And I'm just like kind of just chilling out, which I'm not saying that's bad, you know, cause I know I do it too. But for some reason when I'm streaming, it feels like even if nobody's watching me, even if I literally get zero views, right? Just for, it, it, just the sense of just, there's something about it. It makes me want to go do stuff, right? And it's also like made me look deeper into God's word because uh, it's kind of like helped me um, stay, I guess, consistent, right? Um, it, it's helped me stay consistent and it's also kind of like, it's been a trip actually because it's been weird. Because um, prior to streaming, I always would always read in my head, right? So like say I would read like the verses and stuff, right? I always read it in my own, in my mind, right? But what's weird is sometimes when I read it in my own mind, I read it actually a lot faster, right? I'll be like, duh, 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 and just like finish it out. But, but actually, uh, like speaking the words while reading it, um, because I did get a critique from somebody, right? In the beginning, somebody said I read really, really fast. And I'm like, huh, that's weird. Like, and I, and they said that I need to, uh, pronounce my uh periods better because i'm just i'm just going duh, 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 you know just like and i still do that because i think it's because when i read in my mind i'm just like duh, 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 you know just like reading it so that's something that i never really understood right it's very interesting reading the scriptures and kind of having to almost slow down right almost to slow down and, and really and, and it's like it's very it's strange right it's very uh very interesting like every way, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Right? 
Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. This is Proverbs, by the way, Proverbs 21. But, yeah. Man, this, this little Bible, dude, it's such a trip, dude. This little thing. I love having this pocket Bible. Because, so, I got this pocket Bible in Long Beach, actually, on my, like, the spiritual thing, right? And what's so crazy is, like, I, I had this goal, right? My, my goal was I was going to underline at least one thing on every page, right? And honestly, I thought I would have just gotten rid of this Bible by now. But now it's like so crazy, like looking back in, I'm like, sometimes I can even remember when I underlined something down, right? I'm like, man, I underlined that when I was like going through that, right? And it's just so weird, like reading it again, right? You lived in a car too. I lived in my, what is that car? A uh, self-made van for, oh wow, you made a self-made van, huh? Sorry, I have to go behind my uh, my phone to read the chat because my other phone died. Yeah, I don't know why they do that live streams on TikTok for peeps. Just use a prepaid plan here in Malaga, Spain. Huh, interesting. Don't need backpacks, just mobile. Oh, interesting, huh? It is interesting. But I think it's a good way to somehow... I think it's another good way to somehow kind of almost practice proclaiming the gospel, right? Because, I mean, that's the thing is, um, I don't know if you've listened to this, but I brought this up a lot of times. But Matthew 14 through, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, right? Let me, let me read it. You pro you've definitely heard these verses before, but um, these verses actually got me to start streaming. It sounds ridiculous, but, you know, it's, the, it's these verses right here. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven, right? And what's weird is I, I listen to like 20 sermons on the on these verses right here. And all these, all these pastors are like, you know, we should be like not trying to hide and all this stuff. And it actually kind of pushed me into trying to do live streams, right? And um, here I am, 484 streams later. <laughs> And here we are, right? And then the other thing is, is like these verses too, like, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you, right? So like thinking about that. And then the first parable that Jesus goes into is he likens the kingdom to people that go out and sow seeds, right? And it just like hit me. I was like, wow. Like, so we should be seeking first how to try to sow seeds, right? And, um, just inspired me and just look and you know just listening to a lot of sermons on this stuff hearing other believers um just very very it's always inspiring right um think thinking about like the great commission and stuff like that and uh yeah and it, yeah it's it's a uh, it's weird streaming is a good way to reach out yeah yeah i think it is um i think but the scary part about streaming i think this is the reason why maybe a lot of believers are a bit scared to maybe try and stream is because I have noticed this too. And now I use this phrase a lot is like, take my words, grain of salt, right? Because the thing about it is when I'm streaming, I can't edit something out, right? Like I can't, like if I say something wrong, it's like, boom, it's like, I'm going to have, you, you just got to go with it. Right. And I think that is maybe makes a lot of people hesitate hesitate to even do it right because it's almost like showing people your failures right and that's a strange thing about streaming right um it's like you almost have to accept the fact that you're gonna fail right but there's some element of kind of realness of like kind of showing that nobody's perfect right and i think that's what's interesting about streaming um yeah yep 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 Well, hopefully we're, we've been planting some seeds. I guess that was what matters most, right? Try and attempt to plant some seeds. It's kind of weird because there's more believers streaming on here than people even that ride BMX. <laughs> so I actually think more people listen to my streams because of the Bible study. And oh yeah, this is the other reason why. So I think it might be really weird that I'm doing this bike stream and then also the, uh, the Bible study in front of it, right? But the reason why I did that I started listening to some streams on um, 
or not streams, uh, some sermons on Matthew 4.19, right? Where it said, where the Lord Jesus Christ says, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, right? And so I, I like looked up a bunch of sermons on that. They always, a lot of sermons, they go into like the Great Commission and stuff like that, right? But um, sometimes I started noticing when I would just do the Bible study, uh, devotional, like not many people really watch it, right? But since I'm like doing the Bible study devotional right in the beginning, and then I get into the bike riding, I'm kind of hitting a different like uh, kind of part of, I guess, the ocean of trying to catch some fish, right? And so that's why I've kind of connected it both together. And um, I'd like to think it hopefully has maybe reached out to some areas that the gospel maybe wouldn't have reached out, right? Yeah. God's word. All praises to the Most High, huh? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I know that one. It's good. It's kind of why I tattooed the St. Peter's Cross on my forehead. It's a way to get people to ask me about my faith. You've got to be real when you're live streaming. Yeah. Wow, you have a St. Peter's Cross on your forehead, huh? Isn't that the one that's upside down? A lot of, you know, that's the other... Okay, so here's another weird thing, right? So, I've... Uh, you know, there's some believers. I've heard this from some believers. They're like, oh, that you shouldn't be wearing crosses and all that stuff, right? But what's weird is... Have you, have you ever seen, like, the... the um, Dogtown Z Boys, they're like the guys that kind of like started skateboarding in um, Venice Beach, California. Um, what ended up happening is there's like this guy, his name's um, his name's Christian Hasoy, right? Um, and what was weird about Christian Hasoy, he actually became a pastor. And going throughout his life, what ended up happening is he would always rock crosses, right? He like he would always wear crosses. Like I I should be rocking my cross more. But like he would always be rocking crosses, right? And what he said is that even when he didn't even believe, right? He didn't even believe and he would be wearing crosses, right? Well, then what ended up happening is he went to jail for like drug charges or something. So he was in prison for three years. And that's when his faith really started growing, right? And he looked back because he's like a pro skater. And he looked back at his old like, uh, like magazine pictures and stuff like that. And he started noticing that he's always been rocking these crosses in, in his photos, right? And he said that it was like God like reaching out to him back then. Like almost saying it was he what Christian and his I'm butchering his words, but he said something like like he felt like God was with him even when he didn't even want to be with him, but he was still there. And and it's crazy because it grew his faith. And it was like a subtle seed of faith, right? A little a little seed that was planted. And then that got him all into the Bible and he became a pastor. So I'm all for people rocking crosses, you know? So even if you don't even believe, you never know how, how someone's going to water their, that seed, right? Because if you when I heard that, I was like, bro, that's that's really cool, you know? So I, when I see crosses, even if, they, even if you don't believe, bro, even just seeing crosses is just cool for me. It's like an acknowledgement. Yep, 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 yep. I haven't even landed anything today. Oh well. That's how a lot of days are. I would like to land a lot of stuff, but I think today's probably just gonna be another day where we don't land anything, but it's fine with me.
I had something. <laughs> Probably the only thing I'm gonna land today. <laughs> it's just so fun to land something, right? Okay, let's stream mark it. The other thing is I lose a lot of people when I do these when I do the Bible studies, right? I've lost a lot of people. Because, I mean, if I was really trying to hit the masses, I probably wouldn't be doing the Bible studies and stuff. I've had these thoughts in my mind, too. Because I see the numbers. I've seen so many of the numbers where, like, I'll gain a bunch of followers, right? And then I'll do, like, a Bible study. And then I just, like, lose a bunch of people. Even I'll, get, I'll even, like, lose more people than I gain. But, oh, well. It's kind of like somebody told me I should just think about it as, like, knocking the dust off your feet or something like that, so... But in the beginning, it really affected me, actually. I was like, should I even be doing the Bible studies? Should I even be glorifying God if, like, this stuff's happening? But I guess Christ already warned us. Just got to knock the dust off your feet. Yeah, it's the inverted cross. The reason I got it was because I felt the regular cross wasn't enough. Too many Christians who don't truly believe wear it. As a superficial fashion thing, yeah. You talk about watering the seed, and that's good. But sometimes the field needs to be plowed first. Very true. Very true. And, and sometimes, you know, God, like, does some mysterious things, right? Because I don't know, like, have you ever gone to RPG games? Because I was talking about this on my Bible study earlier today. But um, I think God kind of, like, sometimes I wonder... Like how, because you know how, how, how Jesus Christ says, like the grain of a mustard seed, like the, the smallest of all seeds. Sometimes I wonder how, how subtle can the faith be, right? Like can God like mysteriously even like use mundane aspects or maybe other believers might even frown upon, but might build somebody else's faith up, right? So I don't know. Ed knew. Let's see, did I put a stream marker right there? That stream marker. The other thing is, it seems like Red does not like these streams, but oh well. I just keep doing it. Might do like a drawing stream actually. Probably land one more thing. Let's see if I can land a sticky. Probably won't be able to land one, but we'll give one more shot. Try like three times or something. on that note I can't even believe I landed that that was crazy normally I do not land that trick like that it was weird I like stalled it out at the end <laughs> uh, that was fun I think that's the end of the stream right there though what RPGs do you play um, sometimes I'll play some WoW I, I actually have been playing WoW for a long time Wow, that's basically the only one. So uh, I guess uh, my friends, I had some Christian friend, or well, one Christian friend, and he used to play a lot of Diablo 2. But um, yeah, Diablo 2, the Paladin class is very interesting. It's like interesting, um, like thinking about and looking into some of these like RPG classes, right? 
like say, like the cleric or the priest or the paladin or even some of these nature classes, right? And like seeing some of the words that they use, um, it's weird because some of the words are literally words that are in the Bible. And uh, I think it's really strange because what happened to me is I was talking about this earlier, but like what happened to me was like before I was really a believer, right? I played some of these games and I got into some of these classes, right? And um, I, I got recognized by some of these words, you know, like salvation or fortitude or, you know, things like that. Um, and it was weird because I feel like God almost like made that kind of like a weird soil before the seeds started getting planted in me and I started really believing. But anyway, man, I think I'm going to end the stream. I might do a drawing stream later, but I'm not too sure. I wasn't even going to try and stream today, but we got one done. We got one done. I appreciate you stopping by, man. I do appreciate you stopping by. Seems like a lot of people stopped by today. Yeah, good stream, dude. Thank. Oh, yeah, walk of Christ, man, for sure. All glory to the most high, man. That's who it really is about, right? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He will set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And we need to just try and go and keep sowing seeds if we can. Anyway, man. Dude, I appreciate you stopping by, dude. Peace out, guys. Woo! Try your best and have fun. Remember to try and encourage others. You never know what they're going through and stuff. So, on that note, peace out, guys. I'll have, like, some highlights. We landed, like, two things today. Farewell, travelers.